Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks a lot for checking in. Yes, it is Tuesday. It is time now for another one of our Tuesday tip segments. That's right. Every Tuesday on this channel, it's tips on ownership and operation of your Corvette. So today, let's sit in this Corvette and talk. Oh, wait a minute. That looks just like the car we <laughs> delivered on Sunday Coffee with Conti. Doesn't that look like Kyle's car from North Carolina? Uh, but it's not. Ah, it's for Joe in Ohio. And she's a seven-speed manual. Way to go, Joe. Welcome to a quick tip with Rick. Now, today's video is not going to be as quick as I want it to be, but I'll tell you what, when you're talking about the memory package for C7 Corvettes, there's a lot to talk about, especially if you have a manual transmission. Also, in today's upload, we're going to let you know how to decipher which one of these is number one and number two. Remember, it used to be numbered on top of there, but not anymore. How do you tell? We're going to show you on today's Quick Tip with Rick. Now, before you take delivery of the vehicle here at the dealership where we ship the car, I always do this and set up the memory the same way. Make sure you've got both key fobs in the car. Yeah, before I go into the Driver Information Center and actually turn on the features of Auto Memory and Auto Exit, I want to set those positions first. And as I said earlier, make sure when you do that, you have both sets of keys in the car. But if you get a car from us, I'm going to have it set up for you anyways. So what I want to do is move the seat all the way back to my desired position when I get out of the car and it's turned off. Put the steering column all the way in and up as it is. Sorry, folks, so let me jump back in here real quick. When you're setting that seat all the way back and down for the exit position, that front button, that long button, you can push that all the way down. You can push it all the way back. If you push it all the way back and all the way down, there's a chance that you'll be so far back that when you get back into the vehicle, it's not going to communicate in the memory package. It's not going to be acknowledged. So once you are all the way down and all the way back, what I want you to do is take that long button, move it up just a touch, and move it forward just a touch. I mean, literally about that much up and forward just a bit that way you're not all the way down and the acknowledgement of the memory exit position and the memory recall will work every time you get in and out of the car have the car running and then what you want to do is tap set and then hold this button down until it beeps twice you got to do that transition very quickly or else it's not going to retain the memory tap just like that so if you tap set wait one two and then hold this down notice there's no beeps it's not retaining that setting so it's a quick tap two beeps and the exit position is now set. Now I'm going to move the seat. You can't see it, but I'm going to move the seat kind of where I want it to go. Get the steering column out where I want it to go. Same deal. That's memory one. Now I'm going to set memory two. All right. <laughs> I'm setting memory two at a much different position just for the, for the vlog. Look how close I am. Quick tap. Hold to the beeps twice, now I'm set. Now for all that stuff to work, you have to go into the settings and turn it on. So go into settings, scroll down to vehicle, go to comfort and convenience, easy exit options. You can see that it's off. I'm gonna simply hit it and turn it on. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna to go to auto memory recall, I'm gonna turn that on, and I'm ready to go. Okay, by doing that, when I turn the vehicle off, when I open the door, the seat will go back, steering column will go in. That was close. Okay, so when you guys are at the house and you get in the car and you start it, well, you're not gonna have both key fobs in the car like we're doing right now. So you gotta find out who's fob number one and who's fob number two. For this demonstration, I've gotta get the other fob and keep it far away from the car. Far away from the car. <laughs> when I first start the car, watch up here. You are driver two. Uh, oh yeah, I'm really driver two in this setting. Okay, perfect time now to talk about the fobs that are universal. I've got my settings at number one. I just started the car with the number two key fob and you can see that I'm clearly way too close. What do you do? Do you go back of the house and grab the other key fob? Absolutely not, they're universal. Here's what you do. Oh, real quick before I do that, if you have a seven speed transmission, make sure your emergency brake is on or all of your auto memory features, none of that's gonna work. Okay, so I've got the number two key fob in the car. I wanna go back to number one settings. Brake is on, I'm clearly too close. What I'm gonna do is press and hold down number one. Just gonna continue to press and hold number one. Everything's moving back, oh, all kinds of room now. You know, that is the great thing about these fobs being universal. Uh, if I was number two settings and I had the number one key fob in the car, I would do vice versa the same thing. Just hold down your respective memory button that you programmed until it stops moving, then you're back into position and then you're ready to go.
Okay, guys, sorry, one more interruption. I think it's important to reiterate, you don't have to push and hold down that memory button to get the seat back into position. That's only if you grab the wrong key fob or you're too short to actually put the clutch or brake on to start the car. If you've got those features turned on in the settings, as I showed you earlier, once you start the car, they're gonna come back into position automatically. And remember, seven-speed manual transmission clients, you have to have the emergency brake on for any of your auto memory features to be working, okay? All right. I mean, I know I covered that. I just wanted to reiterate that so everybody knew what you had to do. That was the caveat with the seven-speeds that I was talking about earlier. Now, hey, if I want to squeeze myself to death, I want to go back to memory, too. Press and hold. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Hold my breath. Boom. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about in regards to the memory package. What if you get in the car and you start the car and your memory doesn't move? You can't you can't get into position. I don't care if you have a stick or an automatic, this can happen. Now all of your C7 Corvettes have a power recline, but what if you want to manually pull that forward to grab your jacket, your purse, your bag? You have that lever right there. Lift that up. And then you can pull your seat forward and then you can access the back just a little bit more easily. But here's what happens and prevents your memory package from moving regardless of transmission. As you pull that seat forward, sometimes the seat belt falls back and gets trapped underneath that lever. You'll pull your seat backwards, it's still underneath there. If this is tilted up just a little bit, that memory package won't work at all. Oh, well, before we go, I think I gotta find my key. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the upload. I'm sorry it went a little longer than I intended it to be, but as you saw, there's a lot to talk about in regards to the memory package settings on your C7 Corvette. I'll tell you what, though, I'm having a lot of fun on these Tuesday tip segments. I do appreciate you guys checking them out. And hey, don't forget, thanks to our friends at Michelin, on this channel, you have an opportunity to win a set of all-season tires for your C7 Corvette. There's a link down below to that particular video that says win a set of tires. Make a comment in that video before the 31st of this month, and you might just win yourself a set of all-season season tires for your Corvette. Thank you Michelin and thank you for being here. Now before I give you the typical YouTube doodah, just want to remind you next Tuesday on a quick tip with Rick along with our Corvette technician Chuck Metz, the C7 Corvette's been out for a while. We're starting to see this problem pop up. I'm going to show you what it is, how to fix it right here on our Tuesday tip segment. Okay, now we can do the YouTube doodah. <laughs> and it's important to do because I take it serious and I do appreciate your support. So subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up this video, leave a comment down below because I love hearing from you guys. And our next upload is gonna be on Thursday. And we're just, <laughs> it's just a no, it's a quick one. <laughs> it's just silly and having some fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. I'll see you on Thursday.